Well, I'd like to congratulate the class of 2025. We are so excited to welcome you to Gettysburg College. Um, my name is Gail Sweezy. I'm the Dean of Admissions, and thank you for joining the Career and Outcomes panel um, this evening. You know, tonight we um, have staff and students from the career engagement area of Gettysburg College here to talk with us about a really successful program and also to answer your questions as well. Um, they will have a short presentation and then we'll open it up for questions it, through the Q&A function of the webinar. Um, please note that this session is being recorded. Um, and now it is my pleasure to turn this over to Mark Goldman, um, who will start the webinar. Thank you, Gail. Greatly appreciate it. Welcome to everyone from the class of 2025. My name is Mark. I'm executive director of the Center for Career Engagement. And along with my colleague, Jamie Goford, our associate director, who oversees our employer relations efforts, uh, we're happy to be here and bring to you some of our wonderful students as well. First thing I wanna do is talk a bit about the general philosophy of our Center for Career Engagement. I've been at Gettysburg now for three years, uh, having come from 25 years uh, in the New York City area, working in college career services. And so we really looked at our core philosophy and foundation of our operations uh, to move forward into uh, a wonderful 20th and 21st and 22nd someday century to really make some waves for our students. And four core tenets really uh, regarding our office. One is early preparation to get students started from day one, thinking about career. Uh, we're even at, as you see, admissions events and certainly a part of orientation and the first year experience that students have on campus. In addition, access to opportunities is hugely important and to try to create a level playing field for all our students. And that is really important to us, especially when it comes to uh, funding to be able to do experiences that sometimes is challenging for students to achieve. Uh, thirdly is it's not just our eight person office. It's a, it's a whole culture uh, on campus to help students with their careers. So we really take advantage of the whole ecosystem on campus and beyond, including alums, parents, friends of the college and employers to make the most of the time students have at Gettysburg. And lastly, it's not to forget the wonders of technology and innovative practices that really lead to more opportunities for students, more accessibility for students, and, and ultimately more success for students. And speaking of that technology, it is important that we ensure that our students have 24 seven access to career resources. And two of our heavily utilized platforms that we do have available are Connect Gettysburg, which is our newest networking and mentoring platform. It is a smaller community. If you are familiar with LinkedIn, that's a large international platform. This is a smaller Gettysburg only community particularly made up of alumni and parents who really are raising their hand and saying, I wanna help our students in some way. So it's a fantastic resource for our students to connect with people who are out there in their field, to have those conversations and to really begin exploring their career options. We are also a handshake school, and this is where our students have access. Just today, we actually had have over 8,600 jobs and internships that students can look to and take advantage of and apply for. Handshake is also used for our campus on campus employment for those campus jobs that you as first year students may be interested in. And there is also access to almost 9,000 employers and these employers hold virtual events and they advertise their experiential learning opportunities. So one day opportunities to get involved with a company and learn more about them. So these are two of our really heavily utilized platforms that our students are on almost on a daily basis. And so before we talk a little bit more and highlight some of our additional services that we have, 
I at this time would like to turn it over to three of our amazing seniors who are joining us this evening. Um, Joshua, Peyton, and Sean Zay have been incredibly proactive in their own career development. We have known them over multiple years. Um, they have utilized many of our services and programs. They have completed internships and they have built relationships with our staff. And so their stories are phenomenal. And so I'm going to turn it over first to Joshua to share his story. Thank you so much, Jamie, for that amazing introduction. And um, I just like to thank the Center for Career Engagement at the Gettysburg College for allowing me the honor of speaking to our new, you know, incoming freshman class. Um, uh, yeah, so I am, my name is Joshua Gonzalez. I am from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, it's an urban New Jersey community right outside of Staten Island, so very close to New York City. Um, and I come here, uh, basically, I, at least I came to Gettysburg, uh, really understanding that I wanted to do meaningful work in public policy. Um, and specifically, the kind of realm of, um, of public policy that I was really interested in uh, was economics. And so that's why I chose um, uh, economics as my uh, major to pair with uh, public policy. Um, at least for my four years. Uh, both programs offer amazing resources and I highly recommend them. Um, at least as far as the uh, career portion of my Gettysburg career, it, it, it has truly been very rewarding to see how um, a resource uh, like the Center for Career Engagement has offered me so many tools and, and uh, just general, uh, especially financial tools uh, for me to be able to enjoy a lot of the um, career experiences I was able to enjoy. Um, over my four years, I've had internships uh, every single summer. Uh, uh, the summer is between freshman and sophomore year, sophomore and junior year, and then junior and senior year. And uh, I can't emphasize enough how important um, the resources the Center for Career Engagement gave me were uh, for allowing me to do those things. Um, there was a really, uh, a really cool internship fund that I, I learned about that really gave me the ability to go to Washington, D.C. Uh, to um, intern for an organization that was really passionate about and to serve as their kind of liaison. It was based in Madrid, Spain, uh, but I was essentially acting as their American kind of counterpart to be able to connect with uh, the think tank policy world while I was in Washington, D.C. Um, I've had the uh, opportunity to work in uh, political campaigns, um, kind of the think tank world. Right now, I'm currently interning with the American Enterprise Institute as their education policy intern. Uh, and when I graduate, I will be uh, interning for the summer in the office of Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar, who is um, a Congresswoman in the 27th District of Florida. And after that, in the fall, I will be joining Hamilton Place Strategies as an analyst. And Hamilton Place Strategies is a public affair, an analytical public affairs firm that has an economic focus to issues. So um, yeah, thank you so much for allowing me to speak to you all today. Hi everyone, my name is Peyton Lassard and I'm from East Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Um, I'm a health sciences major and I decided to do a business minor as well. Um, similar to Joshua, um, I would, honestly didn't really think I would end up in Pennsylvania. I found out about Gettysburg College my freshman year of high school. Um, I was recruited for soccer to play on the women's soccer team at Gettysburg. Um, I didn't actually commit though until my senior year of high school. I found that although Gettysburg wasn't really my dream school, every school that I looked at after I saw Gettysburg, I would compare it to. And Gettysburg reminded me a lot of my high school. So it was kind of like a home away from home that had everything I needed in order to succeed. Um, so my sophomore year, I ended up joining a sorority. And although I didn't realize that um, Greek life was something that I would be involved in. Um, it really opened my eyes to a lot of different, um, like, uh, what's it called? Like, um, volunteer work and other communities that I could be involved in, um, using the Gettysburg Network. So I first used the Career Development Center, I think it was my sophomore year, trying to develop a resume. I needed a resume for high school to get into college, but after that, um, I needed to start building on that for my future. So the first time I was able to engage with the Get Career Development Center, it was through the student network that they had. So I met with another student to develop a resume, which was really cool because 
they had their own resume that I could kind of compare with and build off of that. And then my sophomore going into my junior year, so the summer, um, May 2019, I had the opportunity to apply and do an interview with the Career Development Center, which was kind of my first time having a practice, having an interview, which is really cool. Um, and this was for, it was called a digital innovation and healthcare trip. So we had the opportunity to travel to New York. Um, I believe it was over a four day period where we traveled to companies like Pfizer, Deloitte, IBM Watson, Google, et cetera, and other startup companies um, where we gained insight on digital innovation within the healthcare industry, which was really cool where we engaged in like Q and A sessions with current employees and just got to see different sectors of the company. Um, and this is kind of where I decided to build on the business minor as well. Um, I was sure I was still kind of unsure about what I was going to pursue as a major um, and I dabbled in a little bit with PA school options, but I was still kind of curious about the business side. Um, so then I had the opportunity also to experience what Gettysburg has as externships, which a lot of schools don't utilize these where these are kind of like shortened internships, I guess you could call it and oftentimes they're with alumni that um, has basically reached out to the school and would love to take on current Gettysburg students and kind of share with them their careers, which is really, really unique, I think, and really cool because it kind of gives you like a little sneak peek of a future job option. So I had the opportunity to do one um, the same summer, June of 2019, um, at Sanofi with their pharmaceutical research and development um, sector of it. So it was really cool to get more experience with that. Um, so then I kind of got more involved, um, within Gettysburg and I decided to create a mental health club, um, my junior year, which was cool. And through the career development, I worked on, um, like my communication skills and my leadership skills. And I was able to build a really good relationship with Jamie on here, which she's helped me not only with my own personal life and endeavors, but also, um, just coming in and checking on, okay, I kind of think I want to apply for this, or what do you think about my resume for this and stuff like that. So it's the career development has a lot of unique um, people that you can build these relationships with that will help you along your career research journey. Um, so last winter break, um, I decided to do my capstone shadowing a PA. So she was in cardiac surgery. I really liked the PA's job, but I kind of realized that I would step away from the hospital setting. So with every internship or experience or shadowing you have, you learn something from it, whether you like it or you don't like it. And it, both are really beneficial. Um, so then moving forward, I had the chance to go abroad. Um, I was only there for a couple of weeks because of COVID, but I went to Australia which was really cool and I highly recommend. And Gettysburg has a huge and really, really um, well sought out abroad program and you can really go anywhere you want. So that's another awesome benefit. And then right now I'm doing remote for my senior spring semester, but I am working as a medical assistant at an allergist and immunologist office. And then I will continue working as this kind of doing a gap year as I prepare to apply to PA school. So that's kind of my journey. Hi everyone, my name is Shanti Sarber. I'm currently a senior at Gettysburg. I'm double majoring in economics and international affairs. Um, I'm also an international student from Pakistan and I'm really fortunate that I was able to get this incredible study abroad experience over the course of these four years. I think that one of the best parts about being at Gettysburg is that it's a very small, tight-knit community and very quickly you get involved in a lot of different things. Um, for me personally, two experiences that are particularly memorable include this summer I did a research fellowship on campus and then my internship at a private wealth management company. And I'll quickly just talk a little bit about both of them. So in the middle of my sophomore year, I was looking for something to do over the summer and I wasn't quite ready for an internship just yet. So I found out about the Colby Research Fellowship through the Center for Career Engagement. 
um, I applied and I was selected as one of the 10 Colby Fellows, and this turned out to be an amazing 10-week research program on campus um, where I got to do independent research on the impact of tariffs on the solar panel industry. And at the end of the summer, I was actually able to present my research to everyone on campus. And what was so amazing about this experience is that I was very early on able to get exposure in academic research, which is definitely going to be really helpful for me when I apply to graduate school in the nearby future. And secondly, the other experience that I wanted to talk about was this past summer when I was able to intern at William Blair in their private wealth management department. So I found out about this experience through the Center for Career Engagement through one of their weekly emails where they highlight job opportunities for the summer. And I remember that before my first interview, I actually sat down with Jamie, who's on this call right now, and I had a mock interview with her. She gave me some incredible feedback that really helped me prepare for the actual interview. And fortunately, I was able to receive an internship offer in March of my junior year. And I think that being able to add a solid internship experience on my resume really made me stand out when I was networking with Getty, Gettysburg alumni on LinkedIn. And it was actually through a referral from a Gettysburg graduate that I was able to get an interview call for a job that I was applying to at Fidelity Investments. And I'm really excited that I'll be starting work as a client service associate with Fidelity after graduation. So thank you so much for that. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mark. Thanks to all of our wonderful Gettysburg College students. Uh, round of applause virtually to all of you. Thank you again. Uh, they will be around for the Q&A uh, section of the presentation as well. I just wanted to hit on highlights of some of the, the things that we do in the office to assist our students and really facilitate their career planning, job search, and graduate and professional school application process. Uh, the, the biggest core piece of, of what we do is one-to-one -one work with students. As, as many of them mentioned this evening, uh, particularly working with my good friend, Jamie Guilford there, uh, you know, there's a there's a real tight knit relationship with the career counselors in our office and the students that they work with and, and they can last all four years and many times they certainly do and seeing the students uh, enter with you know plans that are just starting to form and seeing them graduate and move on to bigger and better exciting uh, opportunities. It, it really makes the job rewarding for us and knowing that we're helping be a part of that journey for students is, is an incredible uh, motivator for us to, to always keep trying our best to help the students. Uh, of course, as mentioned, resume and cover letters are, are tools of the trade as, as is the interview process. And we really do spend a good amount of time working with students and fine tuning those. Uh, we recently uh, acquired a partner in Big Interview, which is a platform that will help students through a curriculum regarding job search and interviewing, as well as the ability to, to practice video interviewing uh, in light of the, the, the virtual and remote job search and remote employment scenario that we're all facing right now, uh, it's more crucial than ever to really understand video interviewing. And it just allows students to practice and get feedback about their interviewing skills. So we're excited to be working with them on that. Uh, as I mentioned, we do help with grad school and professional school advising, whether it's looking at how to research schools and select them, choosing the fields with which you're targeting, uh, as well as personal statements and application materials. We're always happy to work in concert with the faculty on helping students with that. As we mentioned, Connect Gettysburg uh, before, I know it's on this list as well. Uh, it's more important than ever. Networking is, is the top way people find jobs and that, that hasn't changed in my entire storied career. Uh, and that, that it just continues to be something that students need to better understand, learn, and really take advantage of uh, early on during their college experience, even to get internships uh, and part-time jobs for summer as well. Uh, Jamie actually handles uh, uh, the wealth of our academic internship registration process. Uh, I won't go into the gory details of that uh, this evening, but when students do get academic credit for internships, they, they go through a process through our office to make sure that that is a smooth running process for them. And Jamie definitely ensures that, I can tell you that. Uh, 
uh, we work closely, as I said, with students early on, and we actually have sophomore success appointments, which is a collaboration with our residence life colleagues that students can come in for an appointment with a staff member in our office to really get a good overview of, of the career development process and all the resources both on campus and beyond that can help them with that. And uh, ResLife really promotes that for us uh, to all their residents. Uh, and then if they do fulfill that requirement, they get a, par a point towards their, their residence hall choosing in the lottery system for the following year, which is a nice carrot uh, for them as well. But it does help us get the students into the office, certainly. Uh, career competencies are the skills that employers say they look for in students. Uh, and liberal arts education is just an amazing way for students to gain some of those, whether it's teamwork, communication skills, critical reasoning, digital savvy, and I could go on. And we've really found ways to integrate that into Greek life, into athletics, into our student employment. Uh, and so it is an ever-present discussion about the skills you're gaining and how do you portray those uh, to employers and to graduate and professional schools uh, during your search process. Uh, speaking of partners, uh, athletics is a great partner on campus for us. And we've, we've done a number of programs with them to reach our student athletes. Uh, the SAIL program is, is student athletes who are in leadership roles, and they are now working with us, sort of a train the trainer modality where they will work with the athletes to educate them on our competencies on basic concepts like resume, interviewing, networking. So it's really kind of meeting students where they are through who? The peers, uh, their peers. It's, it's an amazing way to, to really get their attention and, and keep their attention uh, to start the ball rolling to working with our office. Uh, as as Sean Say talked about being an international student, uh, we have a number of international students on campus. And one thing we've really felt strongly about is providing them with good role models that have experienced similar challenges and similar successes that they are going through while at college at Gettysburg. And so we have an international Gettysburgians network where every year we pair up students who are international students uh, with alumni who were international students themselves to talk about anything from their experience at Gettysburg to their career goals and uh, job search strategy. Something new that we're tackling this year is particularly for our seniors uh, due to the pandemic that's occurred and the challenging economy that we're going through is we're partnering with the Career Launch Academy out of Santa Clara. And what we're providing for our seniors on a voluntary basis is a program that will provide them 28 straight days of content and micro learning through uh, online mode, as well as a workbook to work out of and weekly coaching uh, with one of my team members, as well as someone from the Career Launch Academy itself to really fine tune their ability to build a network, to really understand how to target employers, to research those employers, find people in those employers and use that network to succeed at a job search. So we're really excited about this new partnership moving forward. And the hope is that we will introduce it to our newer students, first years and sophomores in the coming years as well. Connect Gettysburg, as I said, more important than ever before. And uh, we just spotlighted a number of our seniors uh, in, in Connect Gettysburg to our alums and our parents and our friends of the college. And that within the first couple of weeks generated 200 messages back and forth about the students, people just trying to lend a hand and help those students. And that's only in platform. We don't yet have any stats on what went beyond the platform. So it's just, it's an amazing tool and it just shows the power of the Gettysburg Network where our alums and parents really step up to help the students. I'm gonna pass it over to Jamie to talk a little bit more about the employment side of things. Yes. Um, so with, of course, this year, a lot of our programming um, and of typical in-person events did go virtual. So one thing that we found was really fantastic this year were the virtual job and internship fairs. We held two in the fall. One was specific to finance, tech, and government. And then the other fair in the fall was a more general. We called it the all majors fair. And then in the spring, we actually partnered with a consortium of liberal arts colleges and universities, both in Pennsylvania and Maryland um, for one large joint fair. And holding this event virtually actually gave our students access to employers that typically they would not have had access to. Um, 
sometimes it's difficult for an employer from New York City to travel all the way down to you know be in person at Gettysburg, but through Handshake and utilizing the virtual platform, um, we can connect students to employers that they normally would not have that access to. One of the other things that I have found uh, really helpful for our students is when our alumni and parents, that powerful Gettysburg network that yes, you, you hear it a lot as you're in the admissions process, but you will continue to hear it throughout your four years at Gettysburg. It really truly is a part of the culture here. Um, they are consistently contacting us when their company has an internship or there is a full-time job available and we can do targeted resume referrals so that you know our office is collecting those resumes and we are you know basically handing them directly off to the alum or the parent who is then ensuring that those resumes get into the hands of the recruiter so it's really that idea of taking network uh, networking to the next level and and getting these students foot in the door with our alumni and parents um, you know, a number of our students talked about the different programs that they did, job shadowing, externships, immersion trips, and those are things that, again, for this summer, we are turning virtual. We're going to be doing a number, um, I believe there's at least a dozen virtual career days where students will have, where they will have the opportunity to be introduced to a company on a virtual platform. There may be panels of alumni, um, there may be virtual tours, they're each set up a little differently depending on how the employer wants to put that together. But again, networking with the alumni and other staff members and representatives in those companies and organizations is vital and something that they get to do. We're also shifting our externship program a little bit this year and we are definitely making it more project-based so students get to engage in a 40 hour project for a company that is you know, meaningful work. They are doing something and accomplishing something with great results for that company. So in terms of you know, this being a fantastic resume builder, absolutely. And we are seeing many students excited about the opportunities with the companies that are participating in this program. Jamie, Jamie. Yes. Um, it's actually about a dozen of those remote projects. And in oh, fact, there's, there's yeah. about 40 virtual career days. There we go. Yeah. And what's exciting about that is those are for groups of students. So in our past programs, there were job shadowing it was all one to one, pretty mm -hmm. much. Now we're able to have, because of the virtual piece, multiple students taking part. So we actually might be able to augment and increase the amount of students that they get to do this. So it's pretty exciting. Sorry, I yeah. didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's fine. I had the numbers flip. Thank you for fixing that. <laughs> um, the college engaged in a new January term uh, this past winter over break, and our office partnered with College Advancement to do industry meetups. And the ones that we focused on over the winter break were a health and science meetup, as well as a business meetup. And so we had alumni and parents from a variety of companies and organizations within those fields and industries come and talk. They, you know, they presented on a panel and then students had the opportunity to go into smaller breakout rooms with those panelists. And after that, they had the opportunity to follow up with them. We really set the expectations with the alumni that these students were going to be following up with them in some way via LinkedIn or Connect Gettysburg. And a number of our students really took advantage of these opportunities. And um, we know of one student who was actually able to um, get an internship opportunity out of her connection that she made with one of our alumni who participated. And due to the success of those events during the January term, we are going to be continuing with those meetups. And we just successfully concluded two additional, one in data science and one in public policy. And again, the students and the feedback we have heard so far is that they are making fabulous connections and building relationships with these alumni and parents um, and learning a lot from them. And then another really fantastic initiative that came out of, out of the pandemic was our Community Gigs Program. It's a partnership with our Garthwaite Leadership Center and our Center for Public Service. PNC Bank um, is the employer who is really helping to promote and fund the opportunity as well. And 
What GIG stands for is Give Ideas to Gettysburg. It's an opportunity for students to learn design thinking and human-centered design within the consulting process. And they were then put into small groups and allowed to act as consultants after being trained in this philosophy to provide questions and answers um, to the local organizations within Adams County to help them to build upon existing programs or potentially innovating new services. And so this was a fantastic way for students who also received a fellowship stipend to participate in this. Um, not only were they getting you know, excellent learning opportunities, making a real meaningful difference and helping these nonprofits that a lot of times don't have budgets and resources to do uh, what they want to do, um, but they were also just really building and giving back to the Gettysburg community, which was a fantastic opportunity. And so these are a lot of different ways that we ensure that our students are connecting with alumni, with parents, and in general with employers as well. And so with that, I will go ahead and pass it back to Mark. Thanks, Jane. So I think you can tell that we are really in it for our students and really want to work with them the whole time they're at Gettysburg College uh, and when, and meet them where they are when they need us is really what it's about. And I've just been impressed in my few years here at how willing the alumni population and the parent population are to raise their hand to help the students. And uh, it's, it's funny because just today I was talking to a journalist from College Magazine and, and Gettysburg, it's not out yet, but Gettysburg uh, was named in the top 10 alumni networks uh, in the country by College Magazine. And, you know, it just, it's just exciting to see when, when the enthusiasm is there and, and they, they just don't say no, it, it's, it's amazing. And so uh, I, I welcome you again to Gettysburg College. I hope that you join us here in the fall and get to become part of the Gettysburg Network yourself. With that, I'll pass it back to Gail for some Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and Jamie and Joshua and Shanti and Peyton for sharing all of your experiences with our guests tonight. For those of you who joined after I introduced myself, I'm Gail Sweezy, Dean of Admissions, and I am moderating the panel tonight, and I ask you to put your questions in the Q&A, um, and we will do our best to get to all of them, and if we don't, we'll follow up with you tomorrow. Um, so so here's, here's a practical question. Um, you know, for, for you, Jamie, when you talk about um, project-based internships, is that 40 hours a week? Or 40, or 40 hours for the total project? So the specific ones that I mentioned, um, the ones that we're using this summer for our externship program, those are 40 hours total for the externship. Now, when it does come to internships, those can vary. Um, typically over the summer, we see a lot of students completing internships that are at least 160 hours, if not more. You do find a variety of employers that offer, you know, a part-time internship, they may call it, which could be 10 hours a week to 20 hours a week, or over the summer, you do have a lot more opportunities to engage in a 40-hour a week internship. So they are a little bit different. The externship is really that, that sort of one-time project uh, that you would be working on for the total of 40 hours, having that alum um, or parent mentor and supervisor throughout the experience, or the internship, the full internship itself could be generally an eight to 12 week experience. And that can happen over the semester as well. Um, I would expect to see a number of students doing more remote internships on a part-time basis over the semester because of, of the ability that we've seen students really taking advantage of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jamie. Are, are the internships paid or not paid? The externships, 
They have a fellowship award associated with them. So it is a small stipend that they get uh, by participating in that program. Regarding internships, those can vary. Um, we in career engagement very much um, support paid internships, but we do know that there are some types of organizations and businesses, typically your nonprofits, that may not have the budget and resources to pay. Um, so you will find a mixture of paid and unpaid opportunities on Handshake if you are looking. And we certainly can work with every individual student to help them really work through that process of making the decision as to whether an unpaid internship is the right choice for them. And so here's one more internship question. You're, you're on a roll here. Um, is it possible to take part in an internship during the school semester and not only during the summer? Yes, it is. What we have typically seen in the past is because uh, Gettysburg does have a very rigorous academic workload, a lot of our students would really focus on internships that were part time and that were either on campus, you know, sometimes a research internship with a professor that might only be, you know, a quarter credit, so only about 40 hours total over the semester, or they would take a small internship out in the community somewhere, perhaps with the with the Adams County Chamber of Commerce. Um, we have an online journalism platform called Gettysburg Connection, not to be confused with our Connect Gettysburg platform. Um, and the editor there um, loves to hire students for internships and they're much shorter and flexible. But with the pandemic, we have found that students have been able to balance a remote opportunity a lot more often. So we have seen an increase in those happen during the, during the semester. Thank you, Jamie. Mark, here's a, a great question for you. Can you talk about how you engage with the incoming class? Is it individually or do students need to find you when they want or need you? Do you, are you able to unmute? So maybe we switch that back over. I got, I got there it, you I got go, it. Mark. Terrific. It was a delayed reaction, everyone. I'm so sorry. I didn't know the answer to that. I wasn't stalling, I promise. So it's a variety. I know that's not a surprise, Gail, that, that it's all of the above. Um, we send out a welcome letter early in the semester to all first year students, encouraging them to come in the office, number one, and telling them the various things that we can do to help them during that time. One of the great things about having student employment in our office as well, is that every student who's new to the college and wants to work on campus needs to register their paperwork for working through our office. So they come into our office and they get to meet us, they see us, we can ask them questions and, and uh, encourage them to utilize the office in different ways as well. So it's really a, yes, they do come in, but many of them, they need to come in for more of a logistical purpose, to be honest. Uh, we are part of orientation. We do have sessions of orientation. Um, we are also uh, in various ways over the years have been part of the first year seminar uh, where we're guest speakers in various classes, where we work closely with various faculty uh, Jamie, for example, works very closely with our STEM scholars at the college. So we are both out there and at the office welcoming people as well. And the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, and I'll finish here, is, is the, the college's kind of ecosystem and having people from all different divisions and departments aware of what we do and know how we can help. Their ears are out there as well. They're listening to what students are asking. They're working with students. They're highlighting what we do. We also have a core of uh, career ambassadors in our office, students whose role is to promote what we do and uh, a pretty decent social media presence as well. So it, there's a lot involved in getting awareness out there to students. Terrific, thank you, Mark. There's some more questions about internships, right? <laughs> and so um, 
Are there internships recommended for first year students? How can first year students get involved? I can actually talk a little bit about my own experience. When I was a first year, I was thinking of something to do over the summer. And at that point, I was definitely not ready for an internship. So I applied to be a tour guide and I spent a summer as a tour guide in the admissions office. And I think like through that experience, I really developed the soft skills that are really important when you do an internship in the future. So there are tons of opportunities on campus working for different departments or doing research that students could definitely utilize. Yeah, student, thanks, Shanse. Student employment is definitely a great starting point too, to build up competencies and skills to, to sell for your uh, future internships, but also our job shadowing program and our externship program, those are all experiential as well. And first year students are plenty, uh, you know, take part in those programs. We also have a number of resources outside of just Connect Gettysburg and Handshake that can connect students to both short-term opportunities and also mock opportunities as well. We have a, a site called Forage that we're partnering with where students can do mock projects presented by Fortune 500 companies and actually submit those projects to those companies for feedback. It's a great resume builder, but even better, a great experience. So there's many things that first years can do. Uh, it's, not, it's not, experience is not limited to, to our upper class students. Mm -hmm. And, and internships are available. We are starting to see more employers who are recognizing that students are coming into college already having experience under their belt. Um, this generation of college students is really one of the first to do that. Um, and so employers are really starting to recognize that students are coming in already with um, you know, many hundreds of volunteer hours with community organizations. They're coming in with the ability to code to, you know, they have basic graphic design skills already. And so there are opportunities for first year students, um, absolutely, with internships as well. And that number continues to grow. And, there, and there's competition between employers or amongst employers to, to get to students earlier. They wanna get the best students who are the most skilled and have the most potential. So they are going to them every, I mean, I've been in the field long enough, you see it go earlier and earlier uh, every, every so often. And it, it's definitely making a shift. There are specific sophomore programs out there. There are first year programs at larger companies as well. So it, the, the opportunities are growing for students earlier and earlier. Thank you, Mark and Jamie and Shansi. Here's a question that I, I might just do, to have the first part of the answer to and then let the panel take it from there. It's what geographic regions have the strongest concentration of Gettysburg alumni, and does this affect the location of career trips that Peyton mentioned? Um, Gettysburg alums are all over the world and are engaged um, with Gettysburg College. Um, they also have connections. If they're from New York City, they have connections in California that they help students um, make those connections. A big part of what we do is we teach networking here at Gettysburg. So the geographic regions are really, really everywhere. We were, uh, am I on? Yes, I am. We were uh, in the midst of starting to plan a, a career immersion trip to the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, for the first time in probably uh, forever uh, is my guess, uh, right before the pandemic came uh, to really get at our alums who are out there. And there are many, and there are many in very interesting and high level positions as well, who, who were expressing an interest. So that's not off the table. You know, we'll, we'll come back to that, that idea. Uh, we've gone to New York, we've gone to Boston, we've gone to DC, uh, we've gone to Florida as well. Uh, it's been mostly on the East Coast so far, but to Gail's point, they're everywhere. And the, the real benefit, the opportunity that came from this pandemic, as challenging it has been for everyone, as we know, has been things like Zoom. Although we may have a little fatigue, as we all know, uh, from that, uh, it's allowed us to have events, like Jamie was talking about, these meetups, where we had people from all over the country together at the same time from a variety of organizations talking to our students. It would be very difficult to get those five plus people together 
on campus ever. And it would be also just equally difficult, if not more difficult to take people to visit all of them. So the fact that we were able to have these gatherings and it's not exactly the same, I will readily uh, acknowledge, but it still is interaction. It still is conversation. It still is sharing. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad for Zoom in, in some ways for that opportunity to really make more connections happen. And along the lines of connection, Peyton, here's a question from you. For you, there's this um, student um, in our virtual audience from Mansfield, Massachusetts. And she was wondering um, if your future job in the Boston area, like how, how recognized was Gettysburg in the Boston area for you? Yeah, it's actually funny. I forgot to mention this, but the doctor that I'm working under right now is actually actually an alumni from Gettysburg. Um, I knew her prior to me attending Gettysburg just from a personal connection. Um, so it's kind of funny that I've come full circle with it. Um, because I hadn't heard of Gettysburg before me like going and um, applying there and then becoming an becoming a student, um, I've actually found that it's a lot more well known than I thought. And it has a great reputation. Like everyone that I tell um, that I go there, that they always respond with, wow, that's a great school or wow, you must be really smart or something like that. It has a really, really well, uh, well known reputation and it's a lot more well known than you might expect. Um, and it has a lot of great alumni in the area as well. So. Um, kind of going back to the other question as well. Um, I know it's a little bit further, but we have alumni from a lot from Connecticut too, which is more close to Boston as well. So um, the connection that you make with a lot of people is, as the, everyone said, is all over the globe. So um, yeah, um, that's, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Peyton. It was very, very helpful. So here's a, um, some questions that are, are around um, jobs on campus. Is it difficult to balance student employment with academics? Students, do you want to sh share your thoughts on that? I can um, start if you guys want. I actually had a couple jobs um, while I was on campus. I started my freshman year working for um, the media aspect of the um, they, we call it Jaeger Center, but it's our athletic communications office. And then I moved on to teaching workout classes and working at the um, gym desk and stuff like that. So you can, be, it's not difficult to um, get a job on campus if you want one. There's, they have announcements all the time on it and you can really get as involved with the community and the um, campus as you want to. Um, in terms of balancing schoolwork and academics, I was an athlete um, also. So it's kind of about just finding the balance that works for you and not overloading yourself because that can often happen if you get too involved, especially as a freshman and you're starting off. There's so many new things that you're having to adjust to as well as being away from home for the first time maybe. So um, it's definitely about time management. You definitely learn a lot of time management um, with employment, but I think it's a great way to get involved, to network and kind of build those connections with other students, but also faculty as well. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And one final question, we're running a little bit over our time here, but the questions are great. So thank you everyone in our virtual audience. Um, so here's a question for, for Mark or, or, or Jamie. Um, generally, how hard is it to get DC internships? So especially around working on the Hill and think tanks and NGOs. I would say it's competitive. Um, and, and there's definitely a process that you have to go through. And I think that Joshua actually could, could speak a little bit to this. Um, but we have so we have a fantastic we call it the Gettysburg Village down in DC and um, they are amazing in helping our students. Joshua, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I, Jamie's absolutely right in saying that DC based internships are definitely much more competitive because not only are you competing with maybe other Gettysburg students, but you're going to be competing with students who are traveling to DC to spend the summer there from around the country. 
Um, and so I'd say, especially on the think tank scene, it's very competitive and a lot of the kind of uh, requirements that you need to uh, be able to do those jobs are super rigid. And I think that actually that's really where um, the Career Center really came in handy was because um, a lot of it is a uh, resume perfection, uh, cover letters that you can write and that you can workshop with Jamie. I've, I've known Jamie since my freshman year and she knows that we worked for hours on a lot of these um, uh, kind of career portfolio kind of things to get into that kind of world. Um, and yeah, I, ca I cannot overemphasize um, how, how many alumni actually are in Washington, DC and how much they've actually been able to help me um, gain a foothold in Washington, like at, at least right now. Uh, I will be working on the Hill, which are also somewhat more difficult jobs to get as well, or at least internships to get as well. Um, but I was able to, I, there's many alumni who work on the Hill who are Gettysburg students who would actually offer themselves up as mentors, um, especially if you're in the application process. And then um, the place where I'll be working at in the fall, so like for work as a job, um, I actually knew about it because the Eisenhower Institute, which is our public policy institute at Gettysburg College, uh, had trips that went there. And I've been, th I've been to the office where it is in DC twice. And there was actually a Gettysburg alumni who worked there. So that's how, really how I got involved with the um, organization. That's where I'm going to be working at now. So don't lose hope. DC is a concentrated market, but um, I know that Gettysburg's uh, Career Center will definitely get you the, the tools you need to, to get there. Thank you, Joshua. And thank you so much to our panel uh, panelists tonight. So, uh, I would give you a standing ovation if we were in the same room together. Um, and thank you for all of your questions in our virtual audience. For those who we've not gotten to, we will make sure tomorrow that we email you um, the answers to your questions. So thank you for asking those. And also, if you have additional questions, the admissions staff at Gettysburg is always available to assist you um, in connecting with Gettysburg and to learning more about us. We're so excited to have admitted you. You're a, a great class um, and uh, we are here to be helpful to you. So thank you very, very much for joining and I thank the, the panel as well. Have a great evening, everyone.